Be careful what you wish for. The Clippers apparently had no interest in moving up to third in the Western Conference standings and potentially facing the Lakers. And they finished the season with consecutive losses to two of the worst teams in the league, the Rockets and Thunder, while sitting key players. In other words, it seemed as though they were perfectly okay with a rematch with the Dallas Mavericks, and that was until game one, when things were less than okay. Luka Doncic became the youngest player to ever post a 30-point postseason triple-double as the Mavericks won in L.A. by 10. Dallas shot 50%, hit 17 of 36 threes, and eliminated Clippers' home court. Luka Doncic with 31, 10 boards, and 11 assists. So he's now averaging 31 just under 10 boards and 9 assists in 7 games against the Clippers in the postseason on 49% shooting and 38% from the three-point line. In other, wise, in other words, he's become a bit of a problem. Get to the paint or die trying. <laughs> no, that's what we have to do. And like I said, they're, I think, 29 in the league at ring protection. So we got to drive the ball and get into the paint as best as we can. I mean, you got to take what the defense is giving you, but I think we can do a better job of attacking those guys and getting into the paint uh, a little bit more often. He's a very unique player for a 22-year-old, you know. The level of poise that he has um, and his ability to, to, you know, slow down the game to see what's going on. Even when the clock is at, you know, six or seven seconds, he still is able to slow it down and hold that ball just long enough to get a teammate a great look. Why doesn't Kawhi get the, the defensive assignment against Luka more often? Um, well, because he has to do a carry a lot of load, you know, offensively. We have three or four guys that, uh, we can put on and mix it up. Uh, but, you know, I think you'll get what you're asking for come Tuesday. Well, and to that point on who's guarding Luka in the playoffs, Kawhi Leonard uh, defended him on exactly zero shots Saturday night. That's remarkable when you have someone like Kawhi Leonard on the floor. Paul George was only on him for four of those shots. In fact, he took more shots against David Zubats, obviously on switches and pick and rolls than anybody, and that went well for, for Luka. He was 6 of 9 for 16 points on those. And Zeke, the other thing is, if you send a second guy or put a great defender on him, he's going to pass you to death. Matt, if you average in 31, 9 rebounds, and 9 assists for the last six games against a team or an opponent, you can officially say, I own that team. <laughs> okay? And there's nothing Somebody you can do to stop Somebody tell Steve Ballmer. And, and here's, you know, they, they played three out, put two in the back. So when you trap, okay, there, there's, there's an easy read down the middle for Porzingis. What Dallas is doing right now, anytime there's a trap, okay, it's easy reads for the roll man. They, they skip it to the corner. Luca can see over everybody. And then he's being trapped so far away from the basket that consequently your defense is so spread out. One man comes a trap, you slide behind him. Now Porzingis has a dunk. I mean, strategically, the way they've dissected the Clippers' trapping defense by moving the pieces around, what Carlisle did in terms of putting three out and two behind, forcing them to trap, and now when you get the basketball, instead of playing four on three, when you put it behind the trap, now it's three against two, and you got two corner shooters, or you're giving me a layup. Clippers, are in, they're in trouble. And mm. not only are they in trouble, they're in trouble because Luca is saying, it don't matter who you put on me. You can have the best perimeter defenders, and we think George, Leonard, Patrick Beverly, when they, when they came together, we all said, hey, these are three of the best perimeter defenders on one team. What Luca is saying, he told Patrick Beverly, you too small. <laughs> he told Paul George and Kawhi in the he, he bubble. He literally told Patrick Beverly. Y'all can't guard me, <laughs> yeah. right? And he's stepping back, shooting threes. And when you double team me, okay, I can pass over you. Mm. I can pass around you. So what are you going to do with me? That's how Luka is coming to the game, saying to the Clippers. I don't care what strategy y'all have. Luka is saying, what are you going to do to stop me? Because you got nobody, nobody that can guard number 77. You know, I, it, it is amazing because the Clippers, as Zeke mentioned, are full of excellent I, perimeter agreed. defenders. They haven't always performed as a team to that level of their individuals, but um, they can't do anything with them. What, what is the answer for L.A.? Well, one of those guys, Paul George or Kawhi Leonard, have got to say, I got him. Yeah. I'm fighting over picks. I'm not going to switch and put Zubac on him every single The switching is such a cop-out. I, I, look, at, he's their top player. 
You want your best defender on him. To say switch and yeah. put your worst defender on him, like, oh, well, we switched. That's a cop-out to me. Yeah. And it, it drives me crazy in this league. Like, if you're a top defender, you say, I got the dude. I'm fighting over. Give me a hedge. Give me some help. I'll get back into him. But I'm just not going to keep switching and putting Zubac in positions where he cannot succeed. Right. Um, so they've got to take it on themselves. And, and, and I like the fact that, you know, he, he's so versatile that you, they put a Patrick Beverly on him. He just takes him in the post and shoots over him. That lasts one possession. The coach said, well, that's not going to work. And then he beats Zubac off the dribble. And, he, and, and the, the two guys, though, Leonard and George, can guard him because they got the size. They got the, you know, they got, they've got um, law, length. They can really do a good job. But they just switch off on him, and then they yeah. end up standing in the corner. And I, I don't understand that. If you're a great defender, you want the other team's top guy. And you yeah. say, I really want him in the fourth quarter when it really matters. And so, I don't know. They're going to have to change their, that, that up because if they just keep switching, goodness gracious. Well, first of all, you're preaching to the choir, and Zeke knows this well. I've been complaining about this for years. It is my personal pet peeve that default switching is, has plagued the yes. NBA now. And I remember back to all those Golden State Cavaliers series where the Warriors somehow were able to dictate uh, Kevin Love on Steph Curry. Why yes. would you ever allow that to happen over and over again? So, Zeke... Is it just a matter of, of what Kevin said and Kawhi and or Paul George saying, I got him and I'm sticking with him. Don't bail me out on the pick? Yeah, there, there, used to, there, there was a time in the NBA, Matt, where big guys would say, no, I'm yeah. not switching. Right. And, and by the way, guard your own man. You get paid just like I get paid. That conversation was had in a huddle. That conversation was had in the locker room. And I can remember the coach drawing up the, the board and say, hey, we're going to switch such and such. And the, and, the, and the bigs would go, no, I'm not switching. Yep. You got to guard your man. And, and the second thing is, you know, with, with, with Luca and, and these switching defenses, right, as an offensive player, now I come down and I get to pick who's going to guard me yep, every right. single time. So if I don't want Kawhi Leonard guard me, I'll call somebody up. I'll call Zubox man up and say, I want Zubox to guard me this time, okay? And if I don't want Zubox to guard me, I'm going to say, okay, Patrick Beverly, you come up here. I want you to guard me this time. So as an offensive player, if I got a chance every time down to pick who I wanted to guard me and I can go one-on-one -on -one against them for 40 minutes, oh, I'm going to have a good game also. Absolutely. I, I'll never understand it unless you have – five potential all-NBA defenders on the floor, why you would ever allow an offense to dictate who guards their best player. And they're all 6'8". <laughs> that's what you have to have. That just doesn't happen. And yeah, I get, back I, I back get in the, the day, those coaches used to get fired. Yes. I, I get the the three-point shooting is complicated it a little bit, but yeah. still, why would you allow them to pick on your worst defender? Uh, you'll see game two, see the adjustments that the Clippers make against Luka Doncic. Tomorrow night right here on NBA TV. Coverage starts at 10 with the CarMax pregame tip just after 10.30 Eastern time.